Whenever you're moving copper pipes under a slab, you cannot solder these copper pipes here. You actually have to braze them. So that'll help you know join the metal together in a different way than soldering. Of course, this is not my first time soldering or welding. I've been soldering copper pipe for about 27 years and I've been welding for probably just as long. So I wanna show you what it takes to braise a copper pipe. Now, every time you have a piece of copper pipe, whether you're soldering it or brazing it, you definitely wanna clean it off. So I'm using this mesh you know, type uh, sanding cloth here. It's not the regular sandpaper looking stuff, although I'm sure that would work. Just make sure you do a great job you know, cleaning it. When you think you're almost done cleaning it, keep scrubbing some more. You know, make sure it's nice and shiny. Um, somewhere around 10 or 20 times, you know, going around it uh, probably should be sufficient. Anyhow, I'm gonna take a closer look at this here. See if there's any little dark spots that might need a little extra attention. Since my copper pipe is gonna go about three quarters of an inch into the, the 90 degree fitting here, I'm gonna go ahead and clean back about an inch and a half. I wanna make sure that I have some nice clean pipe in order to have a little bit of like a, a head or kind of a nicely filled edge around the fitting. I wanna cap off the edge. So when you're filling this copper pipe here, you know, of course the silver solder or really this you know, brazing rod that I'm gonna be using is gonna fill into the joint, but we're gonna cap off around it, which you know, kind of just reassures you that you've got plenty of solder all the way around. Okay, we're not just capping off on the outside, we're making sure that it's going into the joint and also capped off. I'm also gonna make sure that I bring the pipe because I can tell, ow, I can tell that when I use my pipe cutter, there's a few burrs on the inside, little strands of copper. So I wanna ring that. There's a little like, kind of like a triangular pyramid shape there that will help cut all of that. And then also on the outside. I'm feeling the inside. I can still feel a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a lip. Okay. Sticking my finger in there, I can feel that it is feeling pretty nice and smooth. And now that I got those pipes all cleaned up here, I'm going to take my brand new three quarter inch wire brush here and thoroughly clean the inside of the fitting. And now I'm going to take my MC size bottle of acetylene here and turn on the gas. Okay, that should be good enough. Now that that's on, I'm going to go ahead. I think, yeah, I think that's where I left it uh, last Friday. Yep, okay, cool. So I'm going to put. The small pipe on one side of the fitting, and then on the other side here, and place it just kind of hanging over the edge would be good enough. These aren't going to like fall out or anything like that. And like any time that you're doing anything like welding, brazing, or soldering, you want to use some eye protection, some hand protection, all of that stuff. So. I don't know where my other glove went, but that's okay. This is the hand that I'll be using with the brazing rod. This is the hand that I'll be using with the torch. So that's totally cool with me. Maybe I'll find it here in a little bit. And after your gloves, you've got, you know, some eye protection. I have a face shield there that, that's a little bit scratched up. So I'm just gonna use my glasses here instead of some safety glasses. And um, it's also recommended to have, of course, a fire extinguisher around with you. Uh, that is at my trailer, but I do have a, a half a gallon worth of water here in a rag. Um, I'm going to try not to use the rag and water to cool down the pipe. Ideally, that's meant to cool down naturally, and that way your braze joint, your solder joint, and all of that, whatever you're doing, is the strongest because you didn't cool it too quickly. But, it, you know, it's there just in case, and it's there just in case there's some sort of fire. But we have concrete and dirt pretty much around us here right now. The brazing rod that I'm using here is made by Harris. It's a Say Silve 5. It's a 5% Foss Copper, you know, silver brazing alloy here. So that's the package I bought for that. 
Now, it's always recommended, you know, to kind of clean off the edge of the material. Here we see have a nice shiny, nice shiny piece of metal. I'm not entirely why, sure why, since it's all going to get torched and melted anyways. But hey, whatever, we'll still follow the rules that they set. I've got my striker. Now, hey, I forgot to mention. So you're gonna wanna apply the heat basically in the, if you had like a straight coupling, you wanna apply the heat in the middle. If you have a 90 degree fitting here, you wanna apply the heat basically somewhere between the middle of this three quarters or so, you know, side here and the end. So that way it's drawing this silver rod basically, you know, into the joint. And then I'll do the same with the other side here. When you're heating up that copper pipe, and then you want to wait until it kind of gets to that cherry red, you know, it's that orange glow. And that way you can tell if the pipe is hot enough. And then you can start sticking in some of the silver brazing rod here along the edge of the copper pipe. And it will just kind of dab a little bit and just, you'll see it melt in a little spot. That basically helps join the two pieces together in that area. And then it seems to be where just, you know, wait another couple of seconds or so, and then you can kind of push in the rest of the silver around the edges. And basically it just, everything seems to just flow really nicely. It's so much better than solder itself. So this pipe here has been brazed and we're just kind of waiting for it to cool down. See how I'm like 40 inches away? I'm feeling the edge. I can feel that it's cool way over here. Maybe like six inches closer. I can feel that it's a teeny bit warmer. And I'm about a foot. And I can feel it being a little bit warmer, kind of like lukewarm water. And I'm over here, starting to feel hot. And that's probably about 18 inches away. So. You know, I think this joint over here might be cool enough to deal with this right now, but I'm basically going to take a cold, wet rag here and I'm going to kind of creep up on the copper pipe a little bit. At least this gives me something to hold the pipe with. Of course, you want to be aware of uh, possibly having some steam, so you don't want to burn yourself with steam. So I'm just going to lay this on top like that. Just kind of check to see if there is any steam and then at least, you know, if nothing else, I can hold this pipe with this without worrying about burning my hand. And then I'll take the uh, wire brush first and I'll clean it off. And you'll see some flat chunks of this you know, black card material come off. You want to go around on all sides. So whenever you're done brazing this copper pipe, go ahead and give it at least two minutes minimum, maybe even upwards of five minutes for it to cool down. Well, yeah, that's pretty much about it. That's uh, what I would say your expectations should be.